So this time last year, I made a very similar video, which a lot of people have watched now, about will Dow break the hour record. And I used this blog post by Dan Bigham. Now we're going to look at this blog post for this current hour record, but then notify some changes. So anyway, what he said is, um, we'll go through, they said how much, uh, how many watts Dowsett did and then could figure out his CDA from that based on air pressure and all the rest of it based on rolling resistance. So he basically said like, you know, his total power is like 351 um, and all the rest of it. But basically he said, you know, if Dowsett was a bit more optimized, he could go a lot faster and break the hour record, which was what Bigham said. Um, now this is obviously good data. We then go down again to the very end where uh, Dan Bigham comments on altitude and he was saying, uh, according to his calculations, uh, Alex Dowsett is going to be able to do 56 kilometers an hour. Now, this is obviously very big calculations because the altitude effect on aerobic power is what he's assumed here from this paper. I couldn't actually find the paper on and saying how, you know, obviously as you get higher aerobic power decreases, which is quite commonly known, but your CDA also decreases. And if the ratio is higher, then obviously you can go faster. So in Dowsett's video, he's saying, you know, the equivalent airspeed at land is 43 kilometers an hour. He has to do 340 watts. And you might say, okay, that seems quite high for 43 kilometers an hour airspeed. But as he mentioned in the video, the Reynolds number changes. So it's less aerodynamic at sea level, at an altitude than sea level relatively, hence the higher power required. For instance, if he was at sea level doing 43 kilometers an hour, his CDA would be less, so his drag would be less, and I reckon he'd be like 280 for like four, for 43 kilometers an hour on the track. Um, so anyway, the question is then, what does Dowson need to do? Now, dowson has been very clear about this, and he said he needs to do 340 watts, which is why he won't do 56 kilometers an hour, because he don't think he's going to go out that hard. However, having said that, if he was born at altitude, he was high altitude native, then he could do 400 watts, then obviously his numbers would be ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, Dowsett has made his video himself about his training data and how good he's seen he's going to go. So in that sense, there's not too much more I can add. However, I guess the thing I can add is my objective opinion on his Dowsett's training data. So the thing that he said was quite impressive was this right here, where he did 20 minutes to 350 watts. Uh, so some over-unders, some sort of high cadence, low cadence, well, lower cadence. And if you actually look at the interval, it's like two minutes at 346. And then, so that's obviously a... a and then 353, and then 338, and then 355. So it's sort of like oscillating 340, 350. So just above what he's expecting to be doing for his hour record. And he said that was okay. And then he did sort of two 10 minute efforts at 363 watts, um, which is obviously way above what he had to do, 370 watts. You can see he really lifted up to 440 watts here. Um, and his average heart rate was 153, which again, for pros is really hard to tell because they're pro then generally their max heart rate is so low because they're just massively fatigued at all times. Um, but if you look, like, it's obviously still going up quite a lot, which means that he hasn't, like, plateaued. So, for instance, if he was doing a 10-minute max effort, what you'd expect to see is his heart rate would go up, and it would plateau, while his is still going up. And if anything, actually, it starts to sort of decrease here, which is, um, I guess, promising. And again, on this one, when he really starts to ramp it up with 400 watts, the heart rate st still keeps going up, which, again, is what he said in his video, that he still had some left. So on this day to here, you'd expect that, could he hold 340 watts for 20 minutes? for an hour, sorry, probably, which is what the number he says he has to do. However, there are some, I guess, variables that only Alex Dowsett will know necessarily, which is, is it easier for him to hold power on the turbo or the track? Because generally people always say, at least in my experience and other people's experience, is that it's harder to hold power on the track. So 340 watts on the track is harder than 340 watts on the road. Now, you might say, why is this? But again, if you think back, uh, to like how the power meter is going to work. Obviously, when you're pedaling on the downstroke and on the backstroke of a track bike, you're really not, not going to need much power down. And the most efficient way to pedal, most people say anyway, is to put mass amounts of power on the downstroke and little on the backstroke, which I guess could improve efficiency. But if you think on a geared bike, you still are going to be pushing through on like the back of your stroke. Or on a track bike, you really not. You just whack it down and then just like flies up. So, which is why I think it's harder to do power. Another thing to take into consideration is that on the track, on the straights and the corners, it's different. So on the straights, you generally put in, I think, a little less power, and then on the corners, put a bit more power in, uh, or it might be vice versa. But anyway, basically, it means it's slight oscillations of power data, which makes it harder. It's not like you're doing on a perfectly flat road and just riding at 340 watts. It will be up and down the whole time. But having said that, Alex Dowsett is very experienced on the track. Here are some of his other rides. Most of these are just sort of endurance rides, nothing too crazy. So again, 300 watts here, 122 heart rate, like, is not not too much you can read here. Um, this again is one of his TT sessions where he went down to um, sea level. 
384 watts, like nothing crazy, 390 watts and 390 watts, 400 watts here. Again, you can see like, okay, he's doing a lot more power at sea level, but I'm not sure how relevant that is really compared to like what he's going to be doing. Um, up a climb, and then this again was um, some decent efforts here. You can see that 20 minutes to 300 watts is not bad, um, but it's not absolutely bonkers either. So uh, from his data, I guess this is the main one. I remember him seeing it. Um, and then if you look overall, like his volume is pretty minimal um, for an hour effort, but I guess like he's had some big stage races and then he's had some issues with like traveling and all the rest of it. So yeah, in conclusion, what do we think? Well, I think there's two points. So there's obviously the physiological side and then there's just the logic side. Like he's not going to be spending this much money on doing an hour record if it's not a high chance of him breaking it. So in that sense, and also having seen the data on the turbo trainer where you're like, okay, yeah, he's obviously like, hasn't done an hour max, but you can see like, you know, at this altitude, like he's obviously not like 340 watts isn't like bonkers. Um, so in that sense, I think he probably will break it uh, based on that power data and also the fact that he's going for it and he spent a lot of money um, and a lot of time trying to get sponsors to pay for it. So I think he will do it. But then the question comes like, how much will he do it? And again, I don't think it's going to be a 56 kilometers an hour effort. And the reason I think that is, is because it's too risky. Like, again, most people with the hour record just want to beat it a little bit. And okay, he might be on a flyer and he might be going like 55.2. You know, that's the target, let's say. And then he's like, like you know, 20 minutes to go. And he's like, right, this feels easy and ramps up loads. So maybe he'll get like 55.5. However, in reality, I don't think he will. I think he'll ride perfectly on the pace, 55.2, 55.1, just ahead of Victor. And that's all he'll do because that's all he needs. Because the other thing is like, you just know Ghana is going to come round and just smack out the park. And when that happens, like, it doesn't really matter where you're at. Like, it's not like if you do 56, Gana can be like, nah, like, Gana will just do 57 probably or something stupid. So, like, I think in that sense, he just needs to break the record. And I think that's what's going to happen. So, yeah, should be an exciting video. Uh, sh should be an exciting day tomorrow watching. I think it's on at, like, 10 p.m. UK time. Uh, obviously, it changes for everyone else in the world. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be really exciting. Hope to catch as much of it as possible uh, and see if the boy can do it. Because uh, he's doing it for a good cause, not just, you know, personally, um, but also for haemophilia, which is always good to see. Uh, so, yeah, cheers for watching. Let me know your thoughts below. Will Dowsett break the record? And if he will, by how much? And uh, we'll see you in the next one.